Hey, Abby. Um, we need to talk about last night, okay? Um, so those, uh, those machines... My friends? Your friends? Um, are they... Ghosts? Yeah. Of course. How else could they make the robot to move? Hey guys, welcome back to Spooky Tuesday, a weekly podcast where we're breaking down all of our favorite slashers, thrillers, monster movies, and black comedies on the new scariest day of the week. I'm Sydney Thompson. I'm Monica Height. And I'm Chelsea Duff. And this week, we teased it last week. This week's the most important week of the year um, for this podcast, probably. It's one of them. Um, besides every week that the three of us are born, those are also really important too but there's a four fourth member of the podcast you know him you love him it's our lord and savior matthew lillard <laughs> look at her shirt it's on the shirt it's on the shirt when um, are we gonna create one of those like prayer candles and it's just matthew lillard with his tongue out <laughs> sydney that's a really good idea merch 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 <laughs> sydney, that's a million dollar idea right there Trademark, trademark. Yeah, edit that out. Don't let anybody (laughs) take that. Yeah, trademark it before we release this episode and then keep it in so we can get some buzz going for the drop. Exactly. (laughs) Um, But yes, Matthew Lillard was born on what day? I know. The 24th. It's on our Um, calendar. Okay, I'm sorry. I had it memorized, but I was testing you. Classic. (laughs) Monica not looking at the Google calendar. Our beautiful boy, I've gotten better at that. Our beautiful boy, Matthew, <laughs> will be turning 54 years young. Ah, what a sweet wow. young duck. Um, sweet and little we young thing. Sweet little young thing. He's looking gorgeous as ever. And we are celebrating him with his most recent film, 2023's Five Nights at Freddy's. And I'm going to start right away with the IMDb logline before I forget. A troubled security guard begins working at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. During his first night on the job, he realizes that the night shift won't be so easy to get through. Pretty soon, he will unveil what actually happened at Freddy's. A little you got a for nine me. to five, so I'll take, <laughs> I'll take the nine. nine. I actually was listening to that earlier. Oh. Yeah. And I'll I'll never never see see again. again if I can help. <laughs> oh, God, it sounds so good when we sing it and it's not totally synced because of the Zoom. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no. It sounded no, perfectly no. synced from over here. If you don't know what we're singing, educate yourself. Night Shift by Lucy and Dacus. It's not the our greatest job to song. Educate you, but yeah, we will. We'll, we'll, we'll put the generous. YouTube uh, link in our bio. Yeah, actually, we will <laughs> yeah, put in actually, the reference. We'll put the that's music important. video. That's important. It's very important. Um, and also, the music video stars uh, Jasmine Savoy, and it also includes Phoebe Bridgers in full green. Um, wicked witch of the west makeup making out with someone so okay but here's the thing great music video (laughs) i need her to remake the music video but do a five nights at freddy's version of it i think that would actually be really funny (laughs) i don't want her to waste her time on that sorry i'm being too forward too soon (laughs) someone already made a fan cam i'm sure i will google it right now and we'll find it because there if there's anything i know about five nights at freddy's it's that the fans are fucking psychotic in the very best way that's a positive psychotic positive (laughs) um they are a very 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 genius like um what is it modern sleuth that's what I'm going to say. That's not what an amateur sleuth. That's what I was for amateur. Modern they're, a, they're modern amateur sleuths. Um, and they are passionate as all fuck. Um, and I love them. And knowing about them makes me like this movie more. But I am not them. And so yeah. therein lies my experience with the film, which was just okay. <laughs> Did y'all watch the Nicolas Cage take on this yes. as well? I've been trying to get you guys to watch it for fucking years, but Chelsea finally did. But you just did it after Five Night at Freddy. I watched it like two years ago, so it's a little I fuzzy. watched it forever ago. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. You did watch it then. It was just Chelsea. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was- I mean, when this movie was announced, Monica was here in the group chat being like, they ripped off Willy's Wonderland. And then I Which had to they be like, didn't. this is a video game first. Yeah, Willy's Wonderland yeah, was yeah. inspired by the video game. Yeah. Um, anyway. I don't know about video games. I only know what Leo, another shout out for you, Leo. Sorry. I only know what Leo, our (laughs) listener who does horror games, tells me about horror games. Video games are hard to learn how to play if you're not already a gamer. I tried to play The Last of Us and it was like, I don't know what any of these buttons do. And I keep finding bottle and picking it up and then oh there's a brick I pick up the brick and then oh there's a bottle I'm just setting down items and picking them up I thought I had an endless inventory it is very confusing if you don't know what you're doing and also Did there's I... just like a lot of running oh Did my I god talk... it's so hard to aim it's so hard did I talk on the last episode? You guys need to remind me because my brain doesn't work about okay. um, Big Bear and the VR and stuff. And how you befriended a child online. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't think that you did. But yeah, that was a that was a beautiful moment for you. I tried to play video games when we were all together on a trip in Big Bear over um, New Year's. <laughs> cried and twice first, and befriended a child. I, yeah, I cried trying to play the 007 game, like the first point and shoot point, uh, first person shooter game. I fucking cried because I did such a bad job. I was hysterically laughing. Then I played the VR game and I thought it was a bot that I was in the game with, but then they were speaking to me like a human would. And I realized that I was playing the game with a child and we were like fighting zombies and I died like 45 times and this child saved my life every single time so I'm not good at video games I never would have played Five Night at Freddy's um but it's really interesting lore honestly I I just scratched the surface but it's so interesting uh the lore is I was in the middle of watching this two hour long video because you know me i love watch i know i love going a video the essay. Lore. <laughs> and some of it i was like okay that doesn't make sense how that works but some of it i was like oh this kind of works then some of it i was like wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> well i think and i could be totally wrong so this could be misinformation but my understanding is that the first video game is like very simple, straightforward. You're just watching the security screens. And then all of the lore was sort of developed after the fact as they kept making sequels. So it is not necessarily something that was devised ahead of time. So that is where you're a little bit wrong. And I only okay. know because I read this article from Vulture and that's why I fucking liked the movie more i wish i had watched read the article before i watched it again honestly because maybe i would have tried to keep a keener eye um but okay so the 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 game was created by this guy named scott wow i really made up a last name scott cawthon cawthon c-a-w it's like crawford isn't it it's no it's coffin 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 i'm looking at i'm looking at it right now Um, And so it came out in 2014 and totally, yes, that is what it looks like on its face, that it's a very, very bare bones, simple, 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 simple game. That's just like, you're a guy, he's, we're, you're working the night shift and you're trying not to die from these animatronics. And like, if you do die, you get a fucking jump scare that will make you shit your pants, top, like jump up on the screen and that's it. But what actually is going on is it's one of those things um where there's no like in, you know a normal video game like gta or something like you'll go up to a character and then it turns into a movie for a second and the character's like hey i'm johnny mahani and this is my story i need you to go get a gun and shoot a guy and blah 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 blah, blah. and it tells you the lore in a little cut video so this didn't do this at all there are just like tiny little easter eggs that you would literally never fucking see in in the game in the corner like the number of toes that one of the characters has means something like these tiny little tiny things that you'd never see on the first play and also within the fucking code of the game it's really really interesting because like it seems like a super basic thing but basically these these fans got really 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 into it and the reason that freddy's actually got so popular was because of YouTubers, similar to I'm sure what whoever uh, made that two hour long video you were watching, 
um, Sydney, they like started doing like, you know, fan theory videos and they would be like, I saw this and I think it could mean this. I saw this and I think it could be mean this. And um, it was actually a really cool period because the guy, Scott, who created it, um, it wasn't so popular. So he interacted with the fans all the time. So you could like, he would reply to the videos and, and confirm or deny if things were true. He would leave little hints in like little Easter eggs on his own personal website to help you like release the story or re reveal more parts of the story. You know what this is reminding me of? I know. Swifties. I yes. Scott is the fucking it? Taylor Swift of the video game world. That is like, yep. this is this is so Taylor Swift coded. It literally is. Oh, so Taylor Swift coded. No, it, it's so fucking is. Like, I was reading the beginning of this, and I was like, this sounds like Taylor Swift. Like, he's hiding all this stuff in there. It totally does. And then later in the article, it's like, just like Taylor Swift. And I'm like, yeah. But it, it's crazy. Like, most of the stuff that people figured out is be – it wasn't like something that was figured out like in 2017 i think he released this book let me find it in the article um he released a children's activity book called survival log book and it was like innocuously released into book stores in the united states and it had like all these little games in it that like revealed details about the story and and like one of the things that was really really funny is like he confirmed that the, like um, one of the theories in a review that he left on a website somewhere randomly on somewhere, but it's like, he was leaving, leaving like breadcrumbs all over the internet. It kind of reminds me of what, like, well, what's that thing where you go hiking and you find like a little hidden oh, thing. Geocaching. Yeah. It's like geocaching on the internet with all these like different ways for you to like source what the actual story is in Freddy's. And I, I just think that's so interesting. And I love the people who have the time to figure it out. <laughs> I, I wish I was that passionate about anything. <laughs> I'm such an awe of people that can like connect things like that. Cause my brain does not work that way. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I caught like one little Easter egg thing in this and I was like, I'm a fucking genius. Um, and like, I'm sure there was like 45 more of them that I would never understand. And then especially in the game, knowing how I, how bad I am at using the controller in video games, I would never fucking figure it out. I wouldn't be able to move my head to see the little thing. Apparently some of these Easter eggs are so small that you have to like brighten the game to be able to <laughs> even see them at all. Like, they're, it's literally in the code. You have to have the code of the game because apparently the way these games are made, girl, I don't know how it works. Um, <laughs> there's code that you can somehow access. I have fucking no idea. If I sound like an idiot, it's because I am. A beautiful one, though. We've been over this. Um, and, yeah, that had secrets in there. Cool. I don't understand it at all. That's amazing. I, but, okay, but, okay. I'm going to end my rant soon, but it, it comes to a head. Um, so he basically trained all of his fans to be these super sleuths, right? Um, and to figure it out and they're having this fun little game, blah, blah, blah. Love it. But then it kind of turned on him <laughs> because when you train all your fans to search under, to look underneath the rug and dust out all those dust bunnies and dissect them and look inside there. Oh, what if they turn it on you, Scott Cawthon? <laughs> Cawthon? Um, and they did and they found out that he had donated like thousands and thousands of dollars to MAGA related uh, yeah. things. He's yeah, a big when you Trumpster said dumpster. <laughs> when you said he was big online and interacting with fans, I thought that was funny and interesting because um, I was looking at the Five Nights at Freddy's Reddit, the subreddit earlier, and he was very active in there until like three years ago. And he was like, this will probably be my last post. <laughs> Basically being like, okay, maybe I voted for Trump and like, and I, know I voted I'm about for to some Democrats canceled. too. And like, I know he's not good for LGBT issues, but there are other issues that are also important. Like um, and then everybody in the comments was like, Go fuck yourself. Like you. Yeah, I don't know. It was like a whole thing. And he truly, I don't think, I didn't mean, I didn't really look that closely at his history, but it it seemed like his last um, engagement in that subreddit. No. So he, he truly fucked off he, after that. 
he no he literally um took a step back from being involved with the process anymore after that let's see uh he don't oh it's forty thousand dollars to a litany of maga ish politicians that's like a lot Um, of money (laughs) it is a lot of money and then hold on where does it say yeah i can't find it but he stepped away and he's not like directly involved anymore but basically it's it's super sad because like a huge part of apparently and hell yeah a huge part of the the fan base here was queer people like queer youth and so they were like they're super just and also the online youths in general yeah yeah so so that must have been like you know that's, I mean, it's like every time someone that you love gets canceled, which has happened to me a lot and recently, and I'm not going to talk about who, but you guys probably know who I'm talking about. It's Vin Diesel. Oh. I'm not going to get to it. I have to read the article because I don't want to face up to it. Um, but I know, anyway, I said it to Monica and she goes, I'm not reading this. Anymore. I'm sorry, I brought it up. I'm not open to talking about this at this time. Um, but anyway... It was, it's heartbreaking for these fans and also me. (laughs) So I I can only imagine how upsetting that would be. But yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I, I, I could tell Chelsea and I saw this together. We went in the theater. It was fucking packed. Was it opening weekend, Chelsea, or was it like the second weekend? I don't think it was I opening think it weekend. was um, maybe the second weekend because I wanted to go right away because I'd seen spoilers on Tumblr, like when the trailer came out even. Oh, and then it yeah. out they changed it for the movie. So it wasn't a spoiler directly for the movie as it turns out. Um, but I was like, I want to go soon because i don't want to see any more spoilers and i also don't want to have to not go on tumblr.com um so we tried to go soon ish but we weren't like right on the opening weekend rush we might have gone on like a monday or something maybe no i well i think it was a weekend just because it was or so like full of the theater. It was fucking packed theater. So it wasn't and opening people were weekend. Like, it was still packed. Dressed up, question mark? Were people dressed up? I, Do you remember that? I have no idea. You know, with Gen Z, you never know if they're they dressed like, up. Shirts. or so. Not necessarily like full cosplay. Because I've seen someone in a TikTok full bunny suit. Crazy, crazy full cosplay for this movie. <laughs> Dude, and for video real. Game. I guess it's for the game, but I'm in full cosplay right now for the movie. Um, that's true. So, I'm um, Freddy Fazbear, maybe Golden Freddy, perhaps. You that are... was what I was going for, at least with my little hair buns and my. You look sweatshirt. like a cute little bear, and I'm I if am... Schlubby Josh Hutcherson and Golden Freddy had a baby. That was a, a human woman. I'm girl William Afton, and this Hi. is Matthew Lillard over here. I'm just Matthew Lillard, and that's Matthew Lillard. Pretty star-studded. Pretty star-studded. But yeah, like, it was crazy. The fans' reaction to the movie was nuts. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was nuts. People were, like, screaming the whole time. Not screaming out of fear, because nothing scary happens this entire movie. Um, <laughs> but, like, well, okay, there's some jump scares, and I screamed. So I'm lying. I'm just being an asshole. Um, but, like, they're, like, yelling out things, like, interacting with the movie. Like, they're fucking jazzed. And they it's were reacting to eggs. a lot of things that Monica and I did not know what they were reacting to no in the theater. No and a clue. lot of it was like Easter eggs to some degree, which was my guess at the time. And then also like Monica was saying, it wasn't just that like YouTubers were talking about their theories. There were also a lot of YouTubers who did like play along streaming and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So there was that one guy in the diner at that one point, and they're, when they're talking about like, oh, breakfast is the most important meal, and he goes, well, that's just a theory, and people in the theater were like, yeah, and Monica and I had no idea why, but it turns out that guy is a YouTuber, and that's something he says in his YouTubes all the time, apparently, and he was like, there was like, there's two in this movie who did cameos, that guy and then the cab driver near the end. And they also yeah. really wanted to have, um, I listened to a YouTube video a few minutes ago of how to pronounce his name, but Monica was talking. Um, so I'm not sure I got it right, but it's Mark Matt Pat, Matt they, Pat people... was the guy in the, was the waiter at the diner. That's who it was, Matt Pat, Matthew Patrick. And then the guy who was in the taxi cab was... I found a whole thing that said all these people taxi cab taxi 
It's not a taxi cab. Who calls it that? Old people? I can't find it. <laughs> it was Corey X Pension is like the YouTuber username, I think, or at least that was what was on IMDb Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was talking it. about Mark Fishbach. Um, also, Mark Markiplier. I don't know if that's how you say his name. Anyway, um, he was one of the main people who helped the game, like, get popularity by playing it and streaming it um and people wanted him to play mike schmidt in the movie they like wanted him to be oh, wow. the main guy um and he turned no. down being involved in the movie because he's working on his own other movie so he schedules did not align for him to even do like a cameo um but people really wanted people had like they came to this thing a lot. People have made so much fan content for this. They there was that song that went viral on TikTok. That's like, yeah, it's right. nice to meet me, you. Cha. Na, 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 na. Yeah, that one that brain. Peach PRC was like obsessed with for a while. That's it's a plug made brain. song for this Non-stop. movie. The credit song in this movie, in the actual movie itself, that was a fan made song. Like. The Phantom went crazy, and this movie, like Monica said, it was made so clearly for the fans, and I'm glad that they got that. Yeah. Um, I didn't have the context to appreciate all of that in this yeah. film, and the film itself didn't give me what I wanted. I don't think that... Okay, fan fan people don't kill me. I don't think the movie stands on its own without the lore. And I think a good movie like this that's supposed to be going out to everybody should do both. It should service the fans. That sounded weird. And it should also be something for everyone who's watching it to get them into it you know what I mean like I think that it had a lot of things that made them excited but I don't think it was like a well-crafted film in that way you know what I mean I don't know I (laughs) I read like the only thing that I knew about this was the Willy's Wonderland Mm -hmm. like I've never heard didn't know it was a game didn't know anything like that and now I'm watching two hour youtube videos like investing in the lore i'll never play a video yeah. game because fuck a video game but like i'm invested in this lore i love cool. lore we love the lore game. yeah no it's definitely peaks interest especially if you're like what the fuck just happened because it's not totally clear <laughs> um but i just i don't know i found the movie to have weird pacing problems and even there for a was... 23rd even for like a kitty or a movie like we've been talking about every day, all the time, how they're doing this like PG-13 push to get kids into the horror genre, which we love. It was like, oh my God, not that many scares at all. More than Night Swim, maybe. I don't know, equal to Night Swim. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that um, when I walked away from the movie, when we saw it, when it came out in October. Um, yeah. Monica and I saw it pretty fast. Like I said, my other friends saw it pretty soon after it came out. And we were all kind of like, it felt like a movie made by people who don't really know how to make a movie. Yeah. Um, And it's interesting. One of the threads on the subreddit that Scott Cawthon, Cawthon, is that what we said? Anyway, I think. Yeah. One of his threads on the subreddit is talking about like all the various different like screenplay ideas they had entertained before they settled on this one and there's like a whole bunch of them where they're talking about like they're trying to juggle the concept the basic concept of the game with like the lore with like new audiences with like blah 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 like how much do they keep how much do they try to fit in there were some versions where they were trying to fit in too much and it was like really busy and overwhelmed and like they had to scale it back and then there was ones where they took in too little and then they were like this doesn't feel like the game anymore so like I get that it was a balancing act it's hard yeah and And he said in there it's like a different story to, to be clear than what happens in the games like the the like it's similar but they like it's different right that's not what you guys read too I didn't read that much, but I looked at some of the, like, 
fandom wikis um for some explanation and i saw there were there definitely were tweaks because i think they wanted video game players to still be able to experience like the novelty of a new story or a mystery yeah, or a yeah. without knowing everything that's going to happen so they for sure made some changes because um, mike but was i think you could the main character of... in the game i don't because i don't know yes. if that part existed oh but his did. name was okay. different well his last was... name was different it's yeah. different Here's is that a spoiler for the future movies? Because I read that too. Can we say that? I don't know. I don't know that it's a spoiler for the future movies because I feel like they couldn't. How would they do that at this point? I think they changed it. Yeah, in the yeah. in the game, you were Michael Afton. You were yeah, William you're Afton's his son. So that that's different. That's not what's well, happening here. That can't be what's happening. No, here. it's not. It's not. It's definitely not. <laughs> You never know. Well, well, why is there this weird think, chemistry okay. between Guinevere no. Best <laughs> I and think her that, brother? Um, That's weird. <laughs> that was like the shift that they made. Like that was like the one, a, a, to my understanding, a big reveal in the games. And so they wanted to have a big reveal to that um, level in the movie. And so they kind of split it into two, which was like, oh, William Afton has a child who is this person and William Afton has a connection to Mike, which is in this way. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what they did. That was a good thing to do. And everybody loves a, like a little love story too, which I'm sure will develop over the many sequels because this did so fucking well. There's yeah, definitely and like, a sequel. <laughs> Maddie Lilly said he signed on for a three movie deal when he did his contract. So like oh, yeah. they have they... the potential to at least do three movies and they said they got their budget back in just like distribution rights both theatrical and streaming so like any movie they actually made from the box office and they did really well at the box office was like bonus on top of that mm -hmm. but like I was and saying it was just kind of budget. yeah it was just kind of hard to nail down the idea I think because like there is so much lore and so if you're not really really familiar with the lore not just from the games apparently there's books as well um so yeah, if you're not familiar with all of that it was like hard to write a movie that's good and if you are familiar with all of that like the creator is he is not skilled at writing movies he says in his post so it's like you can have the movie writing skill or you can have the lore and it's like very hard to come up with a collaborative team that can cover all of those bases. I love to have editors. We love to have editors <laughs> to come in and help. But anyway, yeah, I mean, there, there's so much with the lore of this one, but I guess we should we should dive into this actual, the movie, actual movie. What actually yeah. happens in this actual movie. Um, because I know that would have been nice if that man, Cor was it Corey? I don't know. Whoever that one YouTuber was played the main character, but no, fuck that. It's about Josh Hutcherson it's now. About Josh Everybody Hutcherson. shut up. It's about it's... Josh Hutcherson now. What would we have done if we hadn't had this Josh Hutcherson renaissance? renaissance. <laughs> but here's the thing too. This movie had people loving on our short king, Josh Hutcherson. I'm and, a, I love him so much. And oh also, my God, I love him. Like, the younger kids were finally picking up what we have been putting down here on this podcast, like Matt, the Maddie Lily love, the Matt, like, and they crazy. didn't even need the 1996 Maddie Lily scream introduction. They were ready to go full Daddy M Maddie Lily from the go. You know what I mean? Yeah, like this, it was I loved amazing. getting the like fan cams of daddy Maddie Lily. of william afton yeah yeah and i was Dude. like the children get it and then in the comments they were like did you know how hot he was when he was younger uh, and, yeah and, but yeah people we literally were like he's still hot and i was might have been one of them like <laughs> still hot. Hot. we're still out here in the trenches for him <laughs> no i remember that like right after we saw this I re-downloaded TikTok for the first time in a really long time and I only had the spooky Tuesday TikTok logged in as some sort of form of self-control it didn't work so I went <laughs> onto the feed and everything was five night at Freddy's 
everything. It was Matthew Lillard, Matthew Lillard fan cam, Matthew Lillard fan cam, Josh Hutcherson whistle, whistle song, Josh Hutcherson whistle song. Someone doing like, like a whole bus. build of like Leather a club. bunny thing. Yeah. The, whole, the fucking song, that song slaps. I love that song. I wanted to listen to it to pump me up before we started recording, but I forgot. And I'm upset now. I'll have to do it to wind me down <laughs> after we record. It's a fucking good song. And all the makeup. They're doing makeup for characters who weren't even in this one yet. Some lady person who looks cool. Hope she comes by. Don't know who she is. Maybe you do if you played the game. Um, it's not going to be your back. Um, what's that lady's name, by the way? Hold on. I'm going to call Elizabeth her Elizabeth Lale? Elizabeth Lale, who plays Vanessa, who is a cop, unfortunately. Um, she was in season one of You, and I'm a big You stan. So that's that's going to be back for me always. I'll probably call her that a lot during this episode. Just here's a little key moment to understand what the fuck is going on. But yeah, I mean, the cast, the cast fucking rocks for this. Honestly, Joshy, love him. Elizabeth Lale, I love her, like I just said. Matthew Lillard, we don't even have Play. to say anything about that. Come on um also i love that lady mary stewart masterson who plays aunt jane i've seen her in other stuff but i can't figure out where she's so good at being a bitch um and, and abby the little girl is so freaking cute played by piper rubio she's adorable in this i love so, the name piper too yeah that's such a good name um but yeah i mean i also also i oh, fuck i really wanted to do some research about the effects in this movie i read something like back when we first watched it chelsea about how they use mostly practical stuff like they had yeah. actual suits and all that did, did they you read the jim anymore? henson company mm -hmm. yes that's what it was oh how fucking cool is that like there are some things about this movie i really like that's awesome they fucking nailed the spooky dudes the animatronic dudes the chuck e cheeses they did, but it's so strange because I know that they made actual physical puppets that are controlled by puppeteers, and I know that they made stunt suits for stunt performers to put on when they needed to have someone, like, act out more complicated yeah. things, and yet looking at it on screen, it still looks, like, so cartoony to me that it's hard to wrap my head around the fact that I'm looking at an actual puppet it's being a, controlled yeah. by, like, it's something about it still, like, strikes the my eyes. brain as CGI. It's the it, eyes. It's I think the they see you had the eyes or something because the eyes look weird. And also, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. And if this is something that has plot significance that I should wait till later, let me know. But why when Freddy is not in the Freddy Fazbear's place anymore, not in the Chuck E. Cheese anymore, does he not have eyes and he looks all broken? That's a different Freddy. Freddy, and I don't know who he is, but that's Golden what? Freddy. It's Golden Freddy. Oh my God! I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, maybe we should wait. I don't know. Is right, that hold on. Relevant? It's it's, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so they don't get into this. It goes into lore, right? Um, yeah. That William had a partner named Henry, and William was a bunny, and. Henry was Golden Freddy. Like, that was there, and they were in the suits, right? And so that's why, like, Golden Freddy is kind of, like, real fucked up. And then they had, like, the performing Freddy. Oh, but so that was just that ghost kid. Because yeah. that ghost kid is Foxy, he isn't he? The Foxy is the little redhead kid who has the hook, the hook. who slashes him at one point. Oh. And, the, and the, blonde the blonde kid, kid is a is different Freddy. one. Yeah, yeah, I guess okay. he's Golden Freddy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was so fucking confused with that part. Sorry, I skipped all. I didn't think, I thought it was just going to be some weird magic where when they leave the place, they look fucked up. But that's not it. Anyway, <laughs> see, there's so much we don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, Okay, I'm going to say something crazy. Pop off, Queen. I love Josh Hutcherson so much, but I also thought his performance in this was hella fucking boring. I still love him so much, but I just think he was so sleepy eepy the whole time that he was just sleepy eepy the whole but, but, time. <laughs> that is, that's, I mean, that's what his character is supposed to be. He's literally like popping sleeping pills to go into dream yeah. land. 
it just how how it was hard for me to like engage with him because of that I guess I don't know I didn't have any issues with his performance so much as I just felt like the movie had a lot of potential that was not yeah maybe that's what it was like he wasn't a bad actor or anything but I just like I don't know. The, the characters were were fleshed out and weren't fleshed out at the same time. I don't know. The, was, I think it was also just that, like, the dream element felt really under-delivered to me because they made it such a big part of the movie. And I guess it like is... like, 15 times. Yeah, and it's relevant in the sense that, like, he sees the ghost kids in his dream and that's where he can sort of interface with them in a way he can't in real life and the same yeah. way that Abby can. Um, but it just, I don't know. It was like, it was like c- kind of incorporated, but kind of not incorporated. Like he does get slashed in the dream and then is slashed in real life. And he does have that moment in the dream where he like makes the deal with them and then tries to take it back. Um, I felt like the dreams could have been, they could have done so much more and again I haven't played these video games but to me it uh, okay what is tricky about adapting a video game into a tv show or movie is that when you're playing the video game you die like a thousand times and you go back to the last starting point and then you get just keep playing again until you beat the level or whatever yeah. And so, so much of the danger is what happens to you as the player, your character. That's where the scares come in. And unless you're willing to do like some sort of time loop aspect, um, it's really hard to have that same experience in a movie. That said, I don't know why more people aren't doing the time loop aspect. I don't know why they didn't do that in this movie in the dream. You know what I mean? Like it could have been like he starts in the dream. He's trying to visualize the brother, blah, blah, blah. That's how you get that plot background. And then he keeps finding himself like at Freddy Fazbear's fighting them off. You know what I mean? Like I think there was room for that to be more directly interwoven and I like have the vision for it and I don't really know why they kept them more separate other than I guess this was the best way that they could get you to have like some emotional connection to the little kids because just seeing the suits if there's not another way to like work that lore in it's like you see them as little kids and that's like a way to be like they're just little they're just tiny you know what I mean that like, does help mate with the emotional connection too because it is a tragic fucking story you know it's it's sad from the very beginning I feel really bad obviously for everyone involved it's just the the whole lore in case you don't know and you're one of those people who doesn't watch the movie and expects us to tell you um like Josh Hutcherson's character Mike um was a little boy and he was on a camping trip with his brother whose name is Garrett Garrett. uh Garrett with his parents and his mom was like watch watch Garrett for a second and he looked away for one second because there was a goddamn frisbee and Garrett got snatched um and he sees his son or his son his his brother in the back of the car as the car drives away and so Mike is now obsessed with dream theory to try to redream and relive the moment over and over and over again so he can try to remember more details so they can finally find his long lost brother because he's now fully an adult and they never found him um and the other sad thing is that his parents are dead too um like they like completely like their life just like deteriorated the mom died after yeah Yeah. after garrett died or was watching taken their significantly younger sister yeah they had another kid and then the parents the parents died yeah so he's like a you know single father of his sister weird um guardian um and he's having a really hard time he can't keep a job because he's so plagued by this trauma that he he keeps having issues at different establishments um and then there's that yep. one scene where he he beats the shit out of a guy who I'd love that that scene though. Big... <laughs> it just ends up being the kid's dad 
Yeah, well, he thinks okay. the kid's getting abducted. The dad they was being set mean. It up so well, because <laughs> they did. You see the kid standing alone, looking worried. You see you, Josh Hutcherson is working security at the mall. He's at the ice cream place. He has a usual order, so he's there all the time. Um, and he like is. You see him like he's keeping an eye on it. Really, he's he's lasered in on that kid because he's like, you know, mm. he's very sensitive to this issue. Um, and then he sees an adult man in a kidnapper jacket. Like they found the most stereotypical the kidnapper jacket, jacket a man can wear, and they put the dad in that. And then they had him come over, like grab the kid by the arm and start grabbing him and dragging him away. Like you can see why someone with his background would immediately jump to that conclusion. Yeah. Um, maybe you but shouldn't tackle even someone ask. into a fountain and start throwing punches immediately. Like um, beating him like to death. Like he didn't die, but he was like wailing on him. <laughs> really yeah. Hard. yeah. In a fountain. In a In fountain. A fountain. He's lucky they didn't press charges. Why didn't they press charges? Also, just wondering. <laughs> well, we would have stopped right there. <laughs> I, okay, this was kind of what I was wondering when we watched it the first time is like, and, and again, I, okay, here, the, the spoiler that I saw on Tumblr, which we basically said earlier, or at least alluded to very strongly, but the spoiler that I saw on Tumblr was that Mike Afton, the main character in the video game, is William Afton's son. And so when Steve Raglan, career counselor, job counselor, is like looking at Mike Schmidt's resume in that scene in the movie, he stops when he sees his last name. He goes like, oh, Mike, sh and then he changes Realize. his demeanor and instead of being like fuck off you're useless at your jobs he was all of a sudden like oh i have a gig for you um but so i'm kind of wondering if garrett schmidt's story might have been well known um and so if the father at the mall might not have pressed charges if he had known about this story oh yeah um, and then well, was like totally. okay i understand this was terrible and he should be fired and he should not be in this position but I'm not going to take things further than that because this was a horrible that's a story good theory. from 10, 20 years ago. That's a good theory. I don't think that's why William, well, Afton, I don't know if that's why William Afton would have That's not why that. he recognizes the name. Yeah. yeah I, think he, I think he knew more intimately the name, but. Oh, yeah, he just, yeah, he's like, oh. Maybe Boy, he Lillard. didn't know the I name at the kid. time, you know, and then he only learned it from the news the same time everybody else learned it from the news, but maybe obviously he yeah. has a personal connection there. Oh, man. But yeah, it, it's just, it's a really sad setup. I mean, he's fighting for custody from his bitch aunt who sucks, you know, um, and wants to take the daughter just to get a paycheck. Not the daughter. God damn, it's going to be so hard for me to do. He wants to take his sister. Um just so we can get the child, she can get the child support um, paycheck. And, you know, he's kind of forced into this position. And that's when we get M Maddie Lilly. And thank God we do, because he is playing this, this skeezy, skeezy, skeezy job recruiter man. Um, and I love him. He's so cute in these glasses. I'm so glad I had the glasses that are similar. He's just so good in this role. It's so quick, but he's so creepy and icky. I love him. I want more Matthew Lillard. So hopefully uh, we got two more movies and I need more. Yeah. He needs to play no, no. a larger role in them. Well, well now that we know. more screen time in them. Now that we know, I'm sure he's going to have yeah. more screen time. But here's another thing. Speaking of two more movies, they knew signing into this, they're trying to make three. That's another reason why I think this movie suffers. I think that it knew it's going to have sequels. And so it's like, all will be revealed. Mm. And it didn't like give you enough in the first one because it was like, all will be revealed. You know what I mean? Like, it, it like feels too ready for the sequel. Does that make sense? When they were like holding some of it back. Yes. Instead of they're with cluing the audience in. Yeah, and I don't want them to give the whole give up the ghost. I don't want there to be nothing for later, but I feel like it was like they they knew the whole time that there's going to be a sequel, so they made it like that. I don't know. That's annoying to me sometimes. Like it should be a movie on its own as well, but I mean, Lord of the Rings, they all are leading up to something too, so. 
I guess you do get like you have Mike's not completed journey because you know I'm sure he has more healing to do and while at the end of the movie they're like Abby's doing so much better now it's like actually she just witnessed some really horrifying things so that's gonna hit her at some point if it hasn't yet um but they do complete his journey of like he's so obsessed with figuring out what happened to his brother and trying to live in that memory that he does it every single night. He has a poster above his bed. He has the book that he reads. He takes sleeping pills so that he can go into that memory every single night. He has the poster of the Mm -hmm. forest above his bed. I thought that was a cool detail. He's so obsessed with it to the point that even if it's only just for one moment, without realizing what he's giving up he's like prepared to sacrifice his sister so that he can live in this fantasy where Mm -hmm. not just he has his brother not just he never failed to protect his brother but like his parents are there too and they're a whole family like you can see why it's alluring and so he he wraps up that arc where he comes to terms with the fact that he can't live in the past and nothing is going to change even if he lives in dreamland forever and he gets the answer of like what happened to his brother and he like embraces that he is the only person in ab like there is that whole narrative arc and that is completed yeah. but, but it's, it's but they yeah. it's also not because they left a lot of stuff for the sequel with that too which goes into a fun theory um that I thought that I figured out on my own, but everybody else knows too, I think. Uh, but I was still excited. Um, you know, when um, our boy, uh, Mike, gets has his first night on the job and he opens up his locker to get out his little security vest and all of a sudden, boom, jump scare, balloon boy. There's that little tiny balloon boy. And then that the happens later and there's a little balloon boy. Oh no, what's there's what why is this little balloon boy? And then in the mid credit scene, um with that YouTuber who's a taxi driver, boom, there's Balloon Boy once again. Well, obviously there's something going on with Balloon Boy, otherwise why the fuck would it be in there? Obviously. But a little thing that I caught this time that I thought was interesting, in one of the little like quick cut scenes or whatever, where like something crazy is happening, the camera goes all around like the security office, it shows part of the mirror and in the dust on the mirror, it says, it's me. And I actually saw this with my eyes, which was cool to catch something with my actual eyes, but it says, it's me in the dust. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, it's Balloon Boy telling Mike that he's Garrett. Because I think that's definitely Garrett. Wrong. Why would... He's not the cupcake. He's not the cupcake, but you did have this theory back when we watched it in October. So I, I, if it's wrong, that's fine. But I also support Monica's theory. If we didn't have any answers about what was going on, I would say that's a good theory. Okay. But so this goes back to lore because uh, Mike is supposed to be William's son, right? William had uh-huh. three children. He had two sons and a daughter. And then, um, Evan was the younger son and was terrified of the animatronics and so for Evan's birthday Mike and a bunch of his friends decided that they were going to make Evan uh, kiss one of the like one of the Freddy bears or something like that and in the process of doing that uh, he got bitten in half and died and um so mike kept like felt like he was then being haunted by the animatronics because things like it's me would be like written on his like mirrors and stuff and so that is a like a video game nod basically oh, oh. So it's me is okay but my balloon boy theory isn't wrong necessarily but the it's me was something else. Do you know who Balloon Boy is? Uh, Balloon is there Boy. Balloon Boy lore. Balloon Boy is he doesn't kill anybody. He like kind of like pops up in the game like randomly. So he's also just kind of like a fun little nod. 
So I think I, 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 okay. So the it's me thing is, is not that then, which makes sense. Cause it doesn't seem like balloon boy can do that much, but I really, I do think that I'm right for this. Cause they are changing it. They are making some changes and like, why the fuck wouldn't Garrett be in one of the bodies somewhere? You know what I mean? And I had a lot of theories. He I only was like, has so many animatronics to put children's bodies in. But that's his fucking, that's his fucking MO. That's, that's his thing. Does. Yeah. That's his thing that he does. Like he hides the bodies in the animatronics. So I had a couple of other theories. I was like, when we first saw that weird doll one um, with the pink cheeks and she shoved the, when, um, what's her name Vanessa shoves the the broom in and it snaps it in half and that's like le gonna let you know later on how that's gonna come into play you know it was a good like Chekhov's gun whatever kind of thing um but I thought oh like was that like a decommissioned one that Garrett was in and then also there's that doggy that's on the ground um and I was like was he in that one and where is he now but the one with the pink cheeks that closed on the broom that's where they were gonna put um the little sister so that's where, where that one came into play and the doggy one i read about it i gotta look it up but the doggy one is a reference to a theory there was like a theory about a dog that they're like a dog was gonna come i don't know i have to look it up and that's what that was about <laughs> that's what the I dog think... suit was about <laughs> I think Bonnie is, I don't know. I like, I have read some of this stuff and some of it I read in October and I'm just remembering now, but the blonde girl with somebody, whoever the cupcake is like, whoever's dog is in Chica, the Chica, chick Chica had a pet, a pet that was abducted when Chica was abducted and they put that pet dog or cat i can't remember how do you into the, cupcake. In the cupcake i don't understand Girl, this but this, it's this, not this my not business science. yeah it's magic um and but like the well, suits are both. big you know so like i can but also maybe your essence is contained in your pinky toe like who am i to say you know like maybe you just need like a, little a little bit i think it's a little yappy dog so it would fit in there okay i found the dog thing um the the diner in the movie is called Sparky's based on this theory also. Um, but basically there's a rumor that circulated that there was a secret animatronic that could appear in the game named Sparky the dog. And it turned out to be a hoax, but it's one of the most notable urban legends in the fandom. And so that's why the Sparky suit also appear appears in the parts and services room. So that was like a nod to that. So I, yeah <laughs> that's another thing also there was another theory that everything in the, all of the games was a dream um and that's why the dream theory thing in this movie was used and like why the book was called dream theory because it was a reference to the theory that all the fans had that everything in the dream everything in the game was a dream which has since been debunked apparently Aren't you excited for me to tell you about things I don't understand at all, but read in an article? I'm like, I'm like, I like, I understand like, the word. I don't know, but I it's like I don't words, understand it, don't... and also it ended up being irrelevant because it yeah. was debunked. But, but I, yeah, <laughs> but like, I think you should means... know that it happened. <laughs> it have it means like nothing to me, not in a like it's meaningless, but it means nothing to me because I have not experienced this lore. We don't know but... the context. <laughs> we don't yeah. have the context, but just so you know. And if you already know, then you're not listening to this episode. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's why, back to what we were saying before, that's why I don't think the Sparky suit was for Garrett. I, that was a joke. That was a little hee hee ha ha. I like for Balloon the Lord. Boy Garrett. Balloon Boy is Garrett. I will die. Why on else this is hill. he getting in the cab to follow them home? That's brother. That is brother. Ugh. I don't know yeah. why he's so little. I don't know why he's not an animatronic. But well, I, I have to kind of, I don't, I don't know how the lore works exactly. Maybe they're not ghosts attached to those animatronics only because their bodies are in them. Maybe it's just that also their bodies are in them because that's a hiding spot. Because don't they say in this movie, like, they searched Freddy Fazbear's up and down looking for the missing children and they could never find them. But there was one place they didn't check inside of the animatronics, like yeah so maybe this yeah. gear just attached regardless of the body maybe 
it's something there's horrific someone... of what he did to the body and that so there's only a small amount left but the other thought that i had was that garrett is such a good goody boy that he couldn't be turned into evil animatronic by um william afton and so he put him in a tiny little body that can't do very much so he couldn't fuck with his plans that is my theory that i made up today <laughs> i didn't get through my whole two hour video going deep deep into the lore but there is something about william afton using the spirits of dead children because he realized they like attach to the animatronics and they like release some kind of like essence or something <sighs> and he has eternal life which is why like at the end of the movie he says like i'll be back again or something like that that's like a line from the games too i yeah. think because he's looking he's like, I always for like back. immortality or something like that oh yeah it's like he... murdering these kids yeah he definitely weirdo. is not dying for sure after this we know that well he um, yeah maddie lily said he signed on for three movies he they oh, certainly yeah. wouldn't have them do that if they were like he's dead and that's the end in the first well, one also if all the kids are walking around in fucking animatronics who cares if he died he died in the fucking suit he's a he's a big animatronic man now that's what's happening and he can control electricity so that's probably worse <laughs> All these people are just like Gabriel from Malignant. Yeah, I was just thinking just like Malignant before you said that. <laughs> um, But anyway, I, yeah, uh, this movie. I think that also I did like the whole uh, Vanessa aspect and I liked her being there. But also, she creeped me out so bad. So it's like this cop who's like obsessed with you. Like, what, what would you do if you were Josh Hutcherson? <laughs> like, why is this cop here all the time? And she knows a lot of stuff. She's really like has some un un uh dealt with childhood trauma that she's hanging out at this like Chuck E. Cheese all the time. And also, and yeah, just like does. not doing her job if she yeah. could spend the evening. Okay, but do we think she was a real cop? Or do we yes. think she just like dressed yeah. up mm -hmm. like a cop? They to... needed her on the inside to, to stop. Yeah, I agree. I think both it was like she joins the police force to make amends for her father's crimes and also Death. as a tool and weapon of her father in many ways who's being manipulated by him. She's also there to sort of protect him. So it's kind of this like dual thing of like she wants to help and save people but she's beholden to her father and it's hard to go against him and there's all these like layers to it but i think she's a real cop yeah i think she's a real cop because i also go into that cop place to to mm. heal him yes <laughs> cop places there, there's like a cop like s service place that they go into and it has all the stuff that she uses to help his tummy that got stabbed. Yeah, I'm using words that are not very <laughs> descriptive. I am running on a very small amount of sleep and I actively have food poisoning right now. So please bear with me. <laughs> but yeah, they go into like some cop storage unit. There are words that they came at one point. And that's he... not part of the, the pizzeria? That's she a different location. She literally says, we're at a cop storage unit. <laughs> oh. Or, or something like I that. I gotta be honest. I didn't give this movie my full attention when I was watching it today because I was doing same. like all my research and stuff at the same time because I was like, I've seen it. I saw it in the theater. I gave it my full attention then and walked away a little disappointed. Like, I can, oh. I can only, I don't have the love and I don't have the goodwill to extend to this movie for a fully clued in rewatch yeah um, i'll be fully honest i had my headphones in and i walked away during the probably almost the climax of the movie so i could hang something up on a wall instead and the part where he's like i give my sister away to you spirit children i didn't watch that and when he gets stabbed and all that stuff i didn't watch that but i heard it i heard it real good so there you go I was making out for like half the movie and then uh, I was like, okay, okay it's time to go to bed. Movie experience. Yeah. Um great makeout flick. It's not a makeout movie. It's romantic. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, I mean, I think there was a lot of interesting and fun stuff in this movie. Like, totally. we're we're being a little harsh on it, but I think that's only because it looked so good in the trailer. It I looked so like it was going to be. Yeah, I think we, I, Monica and I at least were like hyped to see it. Like, I wanted to see it opening weekend. Like, everybody that I had followed on Tumblr that was posting about it, like, they were all raving about it. People love these games so much yeah so i was really psyched i was psyched for maddie lily to be in another horror movie especially as a villain like i was really here for it and then i just walked away wanting more more maddie on lily, a baby. rewatch yeah I on a rewatch where i didn't have a zillion people around me in the theater being excited about things that were not excited to me there were things to appreciate um <laughs> There's some funny stuff. The The opening credits are really good. Like the glitching when they're just doing like the production stuff is fun and interesting. And then like the Atari themed opening credits after like the cold open with the previous security guard. Like those are really well done. And those like explain the lore that is then given mm-hmm. to us later in the movie where it's got like the golden bunny going around meeting the kids like pulling them away one one at a time and like maddie lily's name pops up yeah maddie lily's name pops up in the credit right when the like mysterious purple guy like puts the golden bunny head on so like they did a lot of fun stuff with that um josh hutcherson obviously incredible um the way that they talk about the conversation with the teacher slash social worker not really sure what her job was but the conversation with her about children's drawings I thought was like really well done and effective and I like wrote that all down in my quote section where she's saying pictures hold tremendous power for children before we learn to speak images are the most important tool we have for understanding the world around us what's real what matters to us most these are things children learn to communicate almost exclusively through pictures and who is that at the center of nine out of ten of them like it or not you're her world like that's used to explain to us the strength of the relationship between josh hutcherson and his sister and that was great and it also draws your attention to the pictures that we see at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Mm -hmm. or whatever, where like right in the beginning, right in the middle, there's the picture of the five kids with the golden bunny. And then like she draws the picture at the end to communicate to the ghost children that like what you think is going on here is not what's going on here. And like you have this tie to this man because he's the only person that takes care of you, but that's not what he did. And that's not what he's doing. And that's not the truth of this relationship. Like I thought that aspect was really well done. Um, So there was a lot that was in here that was good. It just wasn't exactly what I wanted. Also, I really like back to the, to the little girl. What's her goddamn name? Hold on. Abby. 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 Back to Abby, um, giving full ring realness where she's just drawing pictures all the time. And then those pi- and she has her imaginary friend. That's not necessarily the ring. Um, and those pictures end up b- having been of all the kids that were abducted. So that gave me this theory. Right including now. Garrett. Including Garrett. That gives me this theory right, theory right now. Because I was like, how is she connected to those other kids? You know, not yet. She's like, yes, through the end, like through the transitive property. Yes, because those kids are connected to Garrett. But what if her imaginary friend was actually Garrett? But then, mm. I yeah, I think that could be what it was. Because like that Garrett knows her, not they never met, but like they have a familial connection. So that makes sense that he could transcend the bounds of of whatever. Um, right, because he talk knew Mike to her. and found abby put two and two together exactly smart little exactly. ghost boy and so maybe maybe i'm not right about my previous theory where garrett the isn't as obsessed is no 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 balloon boy i think i i think balloon boy is right still too because okay. the both the all you see it elsewhere with the other kids with the blonde boy in particular um he can be a ghost outside of his freddy body his machine body like they can do that so that i think that though that you can be both he can be balloon boy and he can be the imaginary friend um but what i was trying to say is that i don't think that 
if that's the case, why would he lead or lure his sister back to Freddy Fazbear's? Because that kind of seems what it is because he's she's so adamant i'm going to work with you i'm coming with you i'm going over there like why would he lead her there and put her in danger um or maybe it wasn't maybe it wasn't evil maybe it wasn't him being under the the spell of of um william afton maybe garrett ghost boy was like i need you to come here so you can figure out what happened to me. So maybe it was still pure intentions, but I do think that that might have to be who who that imaginary friend was, because the the imaginary friend too was also like, oh, Mike's a dick or whatever at the beginning, and maybe that's him being like a little brother razzing his big brother. That could be another interpretation. Okay, the more we talk about this, I like the movie more when I think about it a lot. But you have to think about it so much. And that's not fair. Yeah, I you like that to theory. Do a two-hour um... podcast on it to get there. <laughs> well, here's I the thing: do... if we if we play the video games, maybe we wouldn't have to think as maybe. much. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe we would love it so much. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like that theory. I think it is really clear, also in the movie, that like children have a different connection to the spirit world or whatever. Totally, like Mike has totally. to be in his dreams to convene with the children but abby can kind of just like talk to them normal consciously um she has imaginary friends that might be something more she can like ask them questions she just like accepts it implicitly like there's that quote where um he's trying to talk to them or he's trying to talk to abby about them and he's saying like are they and she's like ghosts of course how else would they make the robots move can i have some more soup like oh, yeah. she is so not phased by that at all she's just like well Duh. yeah that's obviously they're ghosts obviously this is how it works like this is like tale as old as time with with horror too you know always trust the kid who sees a ghost. weird thing always cut yeah trust your and wife. it allows them to like do some really interesting things too because like that moment in the credits where they list matthew lillard as the golden bunny or golden rabbit is putting his head on like in that conversation mike asks abby to ask the kids about garrett have they ever mentioned garrett do they know the man who took garrett and when he asks her about the man who took garrett she says all they talk about is the yellow rabbit which is like she doesn't know that it's exactly the answer to the question that he's asking but it's a yeah. way to sort of like link that for the audience at least if if you don't already know so totally. it's, they do some really interesting stuff here yeah they don't leave you totally in the dark if you haven't played the video game but like you don't know what to look for you know what i mean without that and i feel like it should be more entertaining on its face than it was you know i want it to be a special experience if you did all the hard work that makes sense to me it should be but i just think like for the layman you're just like okay <laughs> at yeah the end, it's like at least you get the cold open with the security guide guy yeah. and then you get the scene where the aunt has hired those people to break in and they all get got oh, but it like happens relatively that, what a bitch. quickly sorry yeah That's so fucked up <laughs> Let me ruin this man's life and get him put in prison. Like she literally got that cute little uh, babysitter to like Max. go through all his fucking shit. Like that's well, but so evil. anyway, continue. How Mac <laughs> died, right? She got bit. That's and how, how, how in body. the lore is uh, how uh, Mike's little brother Evan dies. Ooh, chomped. like one of William's kids chomped, chomped. gets like <gasps> chomped maybe that's why balloon boy is so small because it's only half of garrett's body sorry <laughs> and then they put it in just a trash compactor and then they put him in a little balloon boy oh, and no there's but no yeah, way I to mean, know like we said this movie is pg-13 it is part of a wave of pg-13 horror movies that really seem to be appealing to a younger audience so horror really seems to be trying to covet a younger audience as it like yeah. comes together and grows up. So I don't begrudge them having this movie. 
And I think this could be a really great kids horror movie as well. Um, But because they weren't really willing to do the dream time loop, Mike dies over and over in the dream idea, or maybe they just didn't think of it and I'm a genius. Um, They had to have these completely expendable characters who get got like relatively quickly. And like, it just made it a little silly. And maybe yeah. that's part of what the genre is, is that it like the kids horror is like a little more silly. Like you have the grown man who looks scary going like, like all the way home. Like that's what it is maybe. Um, but it, it, I think it could have been scarier and age appropriate. Um, and it just like, wasn't quite that. Totally. Like here's something that's frustrating to me. This movie at least for me, and I think a lot of other millennials, um, you know, hits you right in the 90s um, with Chuck E. Cheese. And Chuck E. Cheese was probably around before that. But I'm a 90s kid, and I only know about my own life. Um, so I'm, like, looking at all of these Freddy Fazbear guys, and I'm thinking of my childhood. And I'm fucking 30 years old. Okay? So I'm expecting a 30-year-old movie. Like, it's, pre- it's preying on uh, our nostalgia. But it doesn't pay off for that age age bracket which is a little frustrating, especially because um, this could have been so fucking graphic in the best way. Like all of these gears and the stabbing and the stuff, we get a little bit of that with the the final death and the, and the end. That was pretty graphic, but like, I just wish I had seen more. Sorry to be a gore whore, but like I wanted more. <laughs> gore. <laughs> like we got that one bloody handprint. It could have been really fucking scary. Um And instead, it was just kind of like all behind closed doors, literally, like behind glass, that sort of a thing. Um, And so that that was just frustrating as a as a adult viewer. And and thank you. I almost said an older viewer, and then I had to (laughs) kill myself. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I if I can remember, I think the hand coming out of the suit when Max gets got was like scary and effective. Yeah. But then and her body slamming then, on the ground, that was mm-hmm. And like the silhouette, the shadow of her like getting chomped and her half body following, like that was good. It was good, but there was so much of it that was just like something's happening behind this frosted glass and it's totally. scary and somebody screams and like Or through a oh. grate so you can't totally see it. Like when that guy's oh. face is getting eaten by the cupcake, I'm like, where's the pool of blood splurting everywhere? None. I think if it wasn't for the half body scene, this movie could have been PG. Yeah. Like, yeah, I can see that. It does deal with some um, darker themes, but also like nothing that I don't think they could have gotten away with in Are You Afraid of the Dark or Goosebumps or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I was thinking about it though, because I I was talking to somebody over the last week just about how they're doing all these uh, PG-13 horror movies and how, like, it's, like, annoying for us, but we're all pretty happy with it, you know what I mean? Um, Because it's good for the genre. Um, But, like, you know, back to Megan. Megan, I loved, and it was that. So we yeah. can have it both ways, you know what I mean? Like, we does, it doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be Night Swim. Um. But I liked Night Swim. I know, but for any people, I looked on Letterboxd, every, every <laughs> person Everybody hates gave it. it a two or below. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I give it too high of a score with a 2.5. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, all of that to say is just, I I was thinking back to when we were teens and stuff. And, like, you know, Prom Night was one of the first horror movies that I went and saw, probably, because I was finally had my big girl pants on enough. And that's a PG-13 horror movie. And that Is kind House of Wax me. PG-13? I think yeah. it's R. That shit's, ru- that shit's rough. Why did I, I watch just... it in middle school, then? But, Let's like, see. The Ring. Uh... It's R. House of Wax is R. Oh, my God. I was so grown up. You're yeah. so grown up. Let's see. The Ring, uh, The Grudge. The Ring what? is PG-13? Oh, it yeah. Is. Yeah. Oh, fuck. The Ring's so scary, though. But Everybody that's what I'm saw saying. that except for me. I was too scared for that shit. But that's what I'm saying. Like, there is a way to make PG-13. Oh, Happy Death Day is PG-13, and that movie rules. Yeah. Yeah. 
exactly like it doesn't pg-13 doesn't have to be bad in horror there is like that that um stig- stigma that's a big that's word PG-13. to use for it oh, there's a stigma so against 20 or pg-13 movies um because like you know it cuts the gore off at its knees that is the opposite kind of vibe of what i'm trying to say <laughs> but you know what it i mean gore off at its knees completely bloodlessly exactly no blood splurting at all <laughs> <laughs> um and so that can be frustrating sometimes, but uh, like again, we we don't always need to see. We everything. don't have to be the target audience for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, that, that yes, said. we do. Actually, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, that's actually really fucked up. But... Every movie needs to be. Every but there are ways horny. to be horny, better, Matthew Lillard. Just saying, like it could th- be that better. Is so true, but um, you can make a PG thirteen without having an adult character say the word frickin you know what i mean like they you can there are better ways to write around not being able to say the word fuck than for vanessa to be like aside from that gash on your arm which let's be honest is pretty freaking bizarre like why would she say that and also why was that bizarre in the first place that he has a gash on his arm that moment I think I blacked out for that moment. I think my I my mind bleeped out. It's freaking like, bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> there's oh yeah, the writing in this was weird. Sometimes there's like, remember when she was like, "If you ever bring F- Abby back to this place, I will shoot you in the head or something." Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> which like, like I did appreciate more on the second go around actually yeah, yeah. because like she's got these complicated emotions. She remembers the magic of Freddy's from when she was little and didn't know anything horrible yet. She remembers like the experience of this. She wants to share it. They have their montage of like building the fort and laying down and like playing in the showtime and blah, blah, blah. And like she wants to be able to share that with someone because it sort of keeps it alive for her um but then the reality comes back in and she goes actually that's a bad idea and we can't do that and clearly I have no self-control when it comes to that because I'm the one smashing the showtime button so actually I need you to do it and I need to make it seem really serious to you because I really need you to do it because I cannot do it oh this would be so interesting but she's so funny with them. She's like, yay, let's watch the animatronics. This is the best. Isn't this the best thing you've ever seen in your entire life? Do you want to dance? Want to dance? Like, <laughs> girl, calm down. Yeah. And she loved that fort. She loved that fort. She was all over the fort. <laughs> Forts she for days. It. I would love I lo- would love to make a fort with magical contraptions. It was also last thing on this. It was also hard to watch this after watching Willy's Wonderland, which if I recall, and Chelsea, help me because you watched this more recently. It was pretty gory, right? It was. Yeah. It was a I lot more gory. I think it was gory. a lot more gory. Yeah. So, like, I had that in the back of my head. And honestly, I do recommend, dear listener, that you watch Willy's Wonderland. It has some of the worst acting I've ever seen in my life in it, for sure. It's but not also Nicolas not a Cage. Good movie. Not Nicolas Cage, though. He deserves an Oscar. For his performance in that movie. It's so weird. It's so weird. It's such a good, if you love whack ass Nicolas Cage movies, it's such a good one because it is just fucking bizarre what they do with the concept. If you so. love to watch someone drink energy drinks and clean, it is the movie for you. And if you solve like to have crime. If you like to have very few things answered too, like they do answers for like the main stuff going on, but like there's a lot of stuff that like is about Nicolas Cage's character. You never know, you never find out why he is the way that he is. He's just a very singular guy uh, in this movie, and it's spectacular to watch. Um, it really is. <laughs> but anyway, Freddy's. What else do we want to say about Freddy's? Because we got to get to the end. Um, there were some good shots in here like we talked about the half body max charm that one was good i liked the shot where the cupcake leaps out at the camera and then it cuts to like the chair smashing through the glass display like i thought they did oh, some yeah. good interesting stuff with that i liked that in one. the dream sequence especially um one of the ones early on it's so i put in my notes that it's so 
sensual in the sense of the use of the word that's like about the senses like Mm. the fizzy soda soaking into the wooden picnic table like that shot is like there's something delicious about it maybe it's just because (laughs) I'm like a big soda drinker um but like this this, the sensory experience of watching that is like kind of delightful and there's a lot of stuff that's like pretty there's a lot of things that they're doing where they're not telling you something but they're linking ideas together for you like there's a moment where josh hutcherson is talking to one of the ghost kids in the dream and he says like will you show me the yellow rabbit or he's asking like do you know about my brother whatever he's asking and then he looks down and there's like the drawing of the yellow rabbit in the dirt and they're saying like it's gonna cost you to know basically and like he doesn't realize that it's gonna be the Abby his sister the cost. yeah mm-hmm. and there's like a line where he says like the only thing I care about is finding out what happened to Garrett and that's like another thing of like yeah there is that moment where that really is the only thing that he cares about and he has to realize again the cost of that and then like contend with that would mean losing another sibling that would mean that you not just were a child who was an imperfect babysitter because you looked at a frisbee for one second and by the way don't we feel like William Afton had to have been like sitting there watching waiting for a moment if it happened that quickly right Um, it seemed very like premeditated yeah like oh that there's no way it was his fault but of course he was a child and of course he's gonna blame himself and like now this would be a deliberate choice even if he did not realize what the choice was when he was making it in the dream so like I don't know they set up a lot of good parallels for his character but I agree we're kind of so like divorced from his feelings and so much of it is him being sleepy and him being kind of emotionally disengaged and shut down that it is hard to tap into that in the limited time that we have with everything else going on totally one one little detail though that i did did like a lot that just added to like just the psych not psych, yeah psychological horror of it all when it is revealed that vanessa is william afton's daughter and mm-hmm. she shows him the picture of her and the yellow rabbit when she's the fact that she's holding the airplane that Garrett was had when he was abducted is so fucking disturbing because it really like puts like some of it's not I'm not saying it's Vanessa's fault it's not but it like puts like blame onto her she's like she's playing with his brother's toy like she like had something of his He's made her it's an just such a visceral connection um that was pretty horrific and so it's pretty uh, I mean, I'm glad that he can compartmentalize it um, and go visit her in the hospital afterwards and stuff like that. She's obviously she's not a bad person. It's really complicated. Well, I don't know. Maybe in the sequel, she'll turn evil. I don't fucking know. I didn't write it. I didn't play the game, but but it's uh, there's more she really could have done. And yet, like he says, without her, it would have been worse. So totally. Definitely. It's very complicated matter. Yeah, Um, she says, I tried to warn you. I really did try in my own way. And I wrote in my notes, in my own way, doing a lot of heavy lifting here in this sentence. But she was, is terrified of her dad. She's terrified of him. I mean, mean, she makes that very clear. Yeah, I mean, what do you do? Because it's like, he could, he's probably said like, you've been a part of this the whole time. Like, if I go down, you go down. That well, kind of a thing. Mental. He also literally stabs her. Yeah. yeah. Like, and like, I probably he hasn't stabbed her before, but like, we don't know what else has gone on in their relationship. There's got to be psychological games going on with her. So I, I can't even imagine. At the very um, least. Yeah. At the very least. Yeah. But anyway, should we talk about the, the bitter end? Hold on. Did you catch the little scream moment? when he stabs her that's why i'm wearing yes! the earrings and wipes off the blade that was uh-huh. so good i saw a fan cam of that i saw like <laughs> 20 fan cams of that where there he was like wipe off the blade and then it's screen it's stew wiping off the blade and both <laughs> and i was like love this we love the girlies <laughs> we love the, the girlies you get it girlies. get it we are it's the girlies 
yeah. If I Beautiful could moment, can, great reference. Would, yeah. But yeah, I think Love that I think the reveal was cool, but again, it was like pretty fucking obvious because there was no they didn't give you anyone else for it to be. You know what I mean? Usually like yeah. when you know there's gonna be a reveal, there's like a couple of like random people around the town. There's they no, right. like no throw off the scent. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't really give you any alternates. Matthew Lillard obviously is a big star. And yeah. so to have him just as the job counselor would be like, why are you wasting him? Um, but also when and his so casting was like scene. first announced, somebody like messed things up and he was like credited on IMDb. Maybe I don't remember exactly what happened, but he was credited in some way, somewhere as being cast as William Afton, not as Steve Raglan. So as soon as mm. people I didn't know that saw that, they were like, okay, so he's the villain. And even if you address him as a different name and put him in a different context in the beginning of the movie, people still know. And he's like rewatching that scene, like not this is not a failure of acting on Maddie Lily's part. He fucking slayed the boots house down. He killed it. It was perfect. It was so he was so creepy and so icky. I, I love that scene so much. It was really good. Like what we get of him is two minutes, but it's a great fucking two minutes. But, you know, why else? Unless you're going the extra mile that Chelsea goes to postulate why charges were not pressed by that father who was nearly beat to death. <laughs> why else would he act so weird and change his tune so much when he sees Mike's last name? without there being mm -hmm. some sort of weird connection because he goes from like being like you're a fuck up why are you here to being like can i take your hat like spongebob yeah. reference for those who don't know adam sorry my boyfriend has not watched spongebob <laughs> but yeah i mean he plays it great in that scene which is to say if you know what you're looking for and probably also if you don't it's really clear the second that he changes it could have been that he was an accomplice you know what I mean like Sydney yeah. said in the video games there are the two guys and there's a partner so like mm -hmm. it could have been that he is just the person that is feeding victims to Freddy Fazbear's and not the owner of Freddy Fazbear's but they again they didn't introduce enough other people in this movie Unless they were just going to not reveal the owner at all and like just have the animatronics and then save that for later. You know what I mean? Like there was really no other way for the ending to go. Yeah. Is Freddy Fazbear's franchised? Because um, it, like like the location, like Chuck E. Cheese, because there is another one of the Freddy's games called Sister Location. Um so I'm like, d d did that's where a lot of the plot from this one was pulled, I think. Oh, really? Well, I was I was like, did the other partner have another Freddy Fazbear's? And so there's another set of children over there and different animatronics. Because I know there's some other animatronics that we haven't seen yet. Because I've watched so many videos of people doing makeup tutorials of them transforming or cosplaying into random Fre Freddy's characters and I'm like who the fuck is that who the fuck is that who the fuck is that so there's more there's more animatronics to be found later mm. on anyway I, yeah on the I five know. nights at Freddy's fandom wiki it says that um sister location is the game where you play as Michael Afton and that it's sort of implied after the fact that in Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 4, it probably was Michael Afton who was the main character, but I don't think it is, like, made clear that that's him, and, like, I don't think that that's part of the plot until that one. Yeah, I I'm just postulating for also. features in this Freddy's universe, because it's going to be mm -hmm. different, right? But, like, I think that could be an interesting way that it could go. Um, Like, showing that there's there's more of it. That's kind of a cop-out, but whatever. Who knows? They could do anything. Anything is possible. But Balloon Boy will be the center of it all. Mark <laughs> my words. Balloon Boy. <laughs> um, also, just shouts out. It was gross when the suit kept stabbing him and collapsing in. Yeah. And yeah. I thought it was iconic that Cupcake bit him and started the whole thing. 
It was very blast. <laughs> Here's the thing. Cupcake did the most damage vicious in this movie. So like not Ooh. even the big animatronics. Cupcake has agility cupcake. that the other animatronics don't have. Clearly. I'm starting Okay, wait. Can I start segments now and introduce a segment that's not a real segment? Sure. Sure. Okay, it's time for segments. Sydney, say segmentos. The word. Okay. Um, <laughs> looking the for segment? the opening, Monica. I'm being nice in 2024. That's not true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the first question is, which Freddy, Freddy Fazbear dead child are you? <laughs> Which one of the animatronics do you feel the most connection to? This could also be our poll question um, for later on, but I want to ask y'all first. I like okay. Foxy. Yeah, I was saying Monica is the fox for sure. <laughs> Hook for hand, I patched. Apparently Foxy's character is the only one that doesn't move slow in the games and he'll just like be standing at the end of the hallway and then like, book it at you and attack you and so they did that exact same exact thing in the games or in the movie sorry and people were like no anyway it's scary that it can move fast that's all i had to say continue <laughs> um i would say i don't know if i feel like bonnie is the name of one of the animatronics not the name of the little girl i don't know why i want to call her that but the blonde girl because she's the only girl is like the way that Chica? i would Connect. yeah the chica is the animatronic name so that is also the the child that's in there but i she had a, her own name that they never say in the movie which is great yeah, they, i thought chelsea was chica and you're i feel chica. and i feel very connected to bonnie the bunny oh my bonnie okay perfect i love that for you you're definitely a bonnie the bunny bonnie's cute and, and um, has the little bib i love that you're ready for a snack <laughs> i'm always ready for a snack i'm sorry sorry chica is the one with the bib you're not ready for a snack unfortunately wow Sydney. or you're not making it clear enough in your rabbit form so maybe you should get a bib well and thing. also you could get chica... one of those like paper bunny headbands like the kid has the ghost kid but also like chica has cupcake as a little pet that's very chelsea coded Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, I want have a little, little pet, evil like a little evil, evil pet. pet. Yeah, this is my cupcake. It eats bitches for lunch. Yeah, that's it very Chelsea. Her and name Adam is Susie, is... maybe apparently. And Adam is Freddie because he wore a top hat one time. That tracks. For my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, cool. Now on to our actual segments. <laughs> How could this movie be gayer? And I would like to say it's innately gay because of the fandom. <laughs> yes. And when I was looking at the Reddit, there was a post from um, nine hours ago as of our time of recording, but it'll be a couple of days ago for you guys when you're listening. Um, but there was a post from nine hours ago with an image from one of the games and the title of the post is Funtime Foxy is non-binary. <gasps> um, apparently... In the games, they kept, like, switching pronouns sometimes, maybe accidentally. I don't know. But sometimes Foxy would be he. Sometimes Foxy would be she. And then in this screenshot, it says, the whole fun time gang is out to play tonight. Keep an eye on Foxy. They are quick. Ooh. So. Non-binary icon. Non-binary. Foxy queen. Or uh, monarch. Queen. <laughs> non-binary royalty. Yeah. <laughs> queen is a non-binary term. I'm sorry. It just but is. But monarch is pretty dude. stately. Yeah. Those can be gender <laughs> Those neutral. Those are gender neutral. Sorry about it. Uh, Some people royalty. will respect anybody individually who says Royal. they don't like that for themselves. But as a general, I adopt those Blanket rules. Blanket statement. Yeah. Um, I think the girl cop could have been a boy cop. And the reason that they were so nice is because they were in love with Mike. Like they fell in love with Mike. But I like I Guinevere that. Beck. But I yeah. like Guinevere Beck too. And I like Jennifer Jennifer. I like Josh Hutcherson. Um, so I don't Josh want Hutcherson to... is now Jennifer. <laughs> now he's Jennifer Hutchinson, um, played by Jennifer Lawrence, perhaps. Um oh, because I've been doing apparently that thing where I said his name wrong this whole time. No, I didn't. It is Hutcherson. Sorry. Yeah. I thought 
I thought you said Hutchinson, and I was like, have I been I saying it wrong my whole life? Keep going. I'm sorry. Um, I liked both of them in their roles so much. Um, I do think that we could queer Josh Hutcherson up a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like he could. I know we want trans people to play trans characters, but a lot of people have said that Josh Hutcherson has trans mask swag, and I agree. Oh, um, yeah. And so that could yeah. be you part of it. So um, I also could see, I mean, I think there's like room for gender queering the characters in whatever way we want to as they exist. Um, Abby, I think, you know, could really easily be non-binary and yes. queer. Abby's going to um, absolutely be a non-binary queen one day. For sure. That's um a little butch right there, I think. Yeah. But um <laughs> she is going to like have her ring of keys moment at some point, you know. Um <laughs> I feel like Max was probably a lesbian. Oh, I can see that for her. Yeah. I like that for Max. Max just sitting there watching fucking what was that? What's that? The shopping network. Oh, QVC yeah. or whatever. QVC. I almost said QAnon, and I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> that's not right. close, but not, <laughs> not quite it. <laughs> She's just uh, got QAnon TV on in the background. Once again, on Scott Cawthon canceled for his QAnon ties. Saying, where's my wife? Where's my ring? <laughs> QAnon, where's my wife? Where's my ring? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay amazing and i you know there's no proof that william afton is straight not that we claim him but <laughs> we i we could claim him you know what i mean we we love a gay villain um yeah, that he could is be dastardly. historically you know um and mm, wouldn't be great little, but <laughs> he's got a little pizzazz um <laughs> just just on its own freddie could freddie fazbear could be gay he's got his little, little hat, hat and yeah he's, mm -hmm. uh, great on the stage incredible performer got that pizzazz <laughs> that natural showmanship <laughs> that many in our profession have <laughs> all those ghost kids profession. are lgbtqs yeah to be clear, the profession is queer. <laughs> it's a full-time gig, actually. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, little jaunty hat. You know what, what a little jaunty hat means. It's a signaler. It's a signaler. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other gay thoughts before we move on? I mean, so many gay thoughts. Of course. Not related to this movie. <laughs> Okay, all right. We, we can talk after. Um, next up is where would Matthew Lillard fit into this movie? Here's the thing. I want him more in this movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. More. Maybe like uh, him having a little chit chat with Josh Hutcherson after the break-in instead of the uh Vanessa they wanted to fire it. you but I told them to give you a second chance and blah 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 yeah right like have him more involved yeah that would have been great just like for one more second instead of just those three scenes the one at the beginning the one where he phone gives him a phone call and then the the end, the end. that's it that's the fucking thing oh real quick shout out to the um VHS job instruction that he, he oh watched. yeah I like that, that, yeah. Scene, too. that scene was great I really liked that just that was well done mm -hmm. that was um, fun Matthew Lillard who else could he play if he wasn't himself in this they could digitally de-age him and he could play every single ghost child and also Mike and put him in what different if, little wigs what if what if he played every character, what if he played every character in <laughs> five movie? nights at Freddy's all of Matthew Lillard edition oh, Matthew Lillard. make it happen five Freddy's and Matthew Lillard is Freddy and everyone <laughs> is Matthew Lillard <laughs> I want to see him as Vanessa giving childhood wonder but also existential horror but also a soft vulnerability but also a cold exterior um, and a cat I want to see him as tired, exhausted Josh Hutcherson, where he's just trying to make it through the day each and every day. 
Um, here's the thing. Just Remember when a friend at the mall being like, I had this Pokemon card when I was younger and it would be worth a lot of money now. <laughs> Remember when Cher did West Side Story and played every yes. single character? Yes. I want Happy Lily to do that yes. with this movie. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The wigs. Think of the wigs. <laughs> like, Think of the wigs. We got to get a really big wig budget. That's the first budget. thing. Second, first wig, second to the practical effects. Like, um, I, that's what I want. That's my dream movie, actually. They build uh, practical Jim Henson company suits, but they CGI Matthew Lillard into being a child and to being an older version and to being a younger <laughs> version and to blah, blah, blah. When they CGI the eyes, it's just Matthew Lillard's eyes, eyes. in all the eye holes. <laughs> so horrific. I want it. I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> okay, Matthew Lillard. We we're there. Um, dumb bitch. Who is the dumb bitch of this movie? And it besides William Afton killing kids. He does create a whole new type of magic science, so that's pretty smart. <laughs> and he got away with it for decades, so that's pretty smart. But Aunt Listen, Jane's a dumb cunt. <laughs> hiding the children in the animatronics? Genius. Genius. They never would think they to check there, it. and they didn't. You know who would love this? Criminal Minds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this would be a great Dr. Spencer Reed Minds. would have Could loved it. put it together Both so fast, though. Team. Imagine if there was a world where Matthew Gray Goobler and was Matthew Mike. Lillard were in the same thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> Maybe that's my dream movie. Uh, that's my wet, hot fantasy. <laughs> in case you didn't know, listeners, my original Matthew that I was in love with, because sorry, Matthew Lillard is the, my one true love now, but I am an OG and I always will be a Matthew Gray Goobler girly. Gray Goobler girly. girly. Yep. Monica I and I a strip bonded. Club one time. We saw him at <laughs> Uh, it do improv, which improv not sexy. Matthew Gray Cooper sexy. He was sexy during doing improv, and also we were wearing the exact same outfit. No yep. joke, literally. They I were. met him. We're wearing the exact same outfit. He was even like, "Whoa, that's weird." We're wearing the exact same exact outfit. same outfit. We'll show you the picture sometime. Oh, I've got a video of Monica uh falling down in excitement. It's great. Yeah, anyway, Matthew Gray Cooper, we about, love you as well. It's not about Matthew Gray Cooper right now. This is Matthew. Lillard podcast. Happy birthday, Matthew Lillard. Happy I'm birthday, sorry. Matthew Lillard. Yeah. Sorry, happy to, birthday, Matthew sorry Lillard. to focus on a different Matthew for a second. I just shame, I got a shame. Away. Okay, back to the point. Aunt Jane is the dumb bitch because she's a cunt. She's evil. She's horrible. She does horrible, dastardly things just to get like three. Un- I don't know how much money you get from the government. You can get like a thousand that. bucks, I think, a month. That is like not that much money to steal and raise a child. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna also, spend pretty much all of that money and then some more of your child. own. Yeah, doesn't Here's make any thing, fucking sense. Too, uh, Mike is absolutely a dumb bitch throughout this movie. Unfortunate, but like, he's but got also some things going on. He's got I some don't things, blame but him like, for being like the dream job is one where I can actually just dream the whole time. That's why they call it that. Yeah, but, like, I don't know if I would know that there's haunted animatronics, bring my sister, and then take a bunch of sleeping pills. Yeah, he should not have taken the sleeping pills while his sister was there. What was that about? Yeah, that's some dumb bitch behavior. Yeah, He's like, I know these animatronics are haunted by the ghost of dead, presumably murdered children, considering they went missing in the 80s. And, by the way, when does this movie take place? Um, yeah. Because Josh Hutcherson, if if Vanessa was still alive after Garrett went missing and was taken to have the plane in that photo while Freddie Fazbear's was still open and then it got shut down in the 80s, he is not 50 years old because it's been 40 years since then and he was 10. Like, it, whatever. It takes place out of time. That's not the point. Um, it probably takes place in the 90s. Or like the early 2000s or something yeah um yeah. He's, he's probably like 30 ish um but um yeah i mean i think that what was i saying 
Well, yeah, because uh, uh, what's her name? The babysitter girl doesn't call her friends when they don't come back to the car. She goes in after them. Oh, because cell so phones it could be. didn't exist. Do we? Yeah, see I don't. I don't think they show any. I don't mm -mm. think so. My guess is like the Clues. late nineties. Clues. QVC. One of the people watch that. They still do. Anyway, what were you? Yeah, but like the nineties, early two thousands, like that was big. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. Well, yeah, but I don't want to give it to Josh Hutcherson because he's my man. So can it be Aunt Jay and who's a dumb bitch? Sure. Yeah, no, no, no. I think it's her because she. There's. I mean, I love the That's lawyer it. in that scene in the diner. Like, oh my god, very that's funny. so and funny. The way he's like, he's I so don't. Funny. The, I should be hearing is, this. Yeah. And then she's like, sit down. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think that she is the dumb bitch for coming up with this scheme. I wonder if she's the dad sister or the mom sister. Not that it really matters, but I am speculating that she's the dad sister because um, the dad isn't isn't dead. Actually, he just left presumably after the mom died, but maybe before. Um, but he left the family, and so I could see um, he's clearly uncaring towards his family or maybe i mean also traumatized but also you have children to take care of here that need you um so i don't know i'm i'm more willing to i guess anybody can have a terrible sibling but if he's terrible then i think it's his terrible sister trying to monetize her niece as a foster kid i don't know yeah. but she's a dumb bitch regardless yeah for a zillion reasons all right, well, it's time for our knives out of fives. Did people like this movie, Chelsea? What did they think? It did really well at the box office. Um, yeah, it went it, bang ring. Yeah, it I mean, it was the highest grossing like, Blumhouse movie, right? Ever. I think so. Um, it is, it is. I just read that in uh, the Vulture article I read. It did really good. Yeah, it opened number one at the box office, um, and it made as its money back, its budget back, like I said, just in theatrical and distribution rights, and then made a bunch of money on top of that. Um, the intended audience really, really, really likes it, and so on Rotten Tomatoes, it has 87% fresh from audiences, Um but that was maybe some classic um, internet fandom rallied to express themselves through Rotten Tomatoes audience scores. Because um, from critics on Rotten Tomatoes, it has 32%, which is pretty rotten. Yep. Um, and then on IMDb, it has a more middle of the road score, which is 5.5 out of 10. That said, it is nominated for a 2024 People's Choice Award for oh, baby. Drama Movie of the Year. I can only assume it's they don't have horror. a horror category, maybe. Yeah. yeah. They never do. So it's nominated for Drama Movie of the Year. Okay, cool. The people like it. it. The The people who it was made for love it. The, the people, people who, who know, it was not know. made for love it less. The people who um, don't, don't really know. <laughs> but there's the girls who get it, get it, here. and the girls who don't, don't. And I'm so, and sometimes you're don't. one of the girls that don't. Yeah, and that's I'm okay. <laughs> a girl who don't. Who wants to go first? I'm going to give this movie a 3.5 out of 5. I didn't hate it. I'm absolutely going to watch the next two. Uh -oh. Um. I'm probably gonna finish my two hour YouTube video about the lore. Like it's all I've been thinking about. Um, I love that this movie literally gave us, even if the movie was bad, it gave us a Josh Hutcherson renaissance and another like Maddie Lilly re renaissance. And that is incredible in my Nothing book. Nothing to complain about. Yeah. Like, For real. Without this movie, we wouldn't have the uh, Josh Hutcherson whistle trend realistically. And that's a gift. So fucking funny. That's a gift. We got to do another whistle video. I know we just did one. <laughs> we did one for Malignant, which is so interesting because we had the comparison yeah. with the electricity. So it's meant to be. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to come in right underneath you. Rare that I give a score lower than Sydney, but I'm going to give it a three. 
I'm trying to be uh, less giving in 2024 with my scores, even though I said I was going to be nice and not mean. <laughs> but I'm being, I, I'm always super nice. Um, but yeah, I'm giving it a three. It wasn't for me. The movie wasn't for me. But researching this, I was all panicked because I have been a crazy person today and I didn't budget enough time to do my research. I wanted to try to play the game and do all this fucking shit. None of that shit happened. But I read that this Vulture article that gave so much good information and that got me super excited about this fandom in general. I think it's so cool. I love that it's Swifty adjacent. I love that it's like they don't give it to you at all. You have to find you either play the game just so it's like a silly little jump scare kind of thing or you spend your entire life go searching through the fucking code taking screenshots and lightening them to find out what's actually going on. Or you wait 10 years like we did and we wa you watch a, a two hour long and you let it be video hand fed to you. Yeah. Fed <laughs> you, which it sounds like a preferable way for me. But anyway, I fucking love that. I love a fandom where people are batshit crazy for it and not destructive psychos. You know what I mean? Like it can go bad. This is good. They're positive. They're doing cool videos. They made a song that I'm going to dance to after this. Like, this is a really, really cool fandom. And so I'm excited to know about it. I'm getting more excited now that I know that I have to try really hard to understand what's going on. I'll prepare my brain next time and I'll have a magnifying glass and I'll be ready to go. Um, but yeah, it's just a three for me. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving Matthew Lillard a horror role where people are going crazy again. Thank you, universe. We needed this. We needed this. Yeah, I think I'm kind of right where Monica is. I'm going to give it three knives out of fives because um, I kind of thought it was a little bit of a flop when I first saw it. Um, now that I have more knowledge of it and knew more about what I was getting in the movie watching it, I have more appreciation for it. Like I said, I think they did a lot of cool, interesting, smart things. And I think it was a difficult task. I am so like now attached to my time loop idea or like the dying in the dreams over and over again idea because you know that's not something the last of us as a tv show could have done and gotten away with in a way that made sense and worked for their story but by building the dream element into this movie it's so like right fucking there and they didn't grab it that it feels like such a missed opportunity to me um maybe i'll just have to collaborate with a real Beck. gamer on some other adaptation i don't know um but yeah, I mean, to me, it's like there's a version of the movie that I like I want to get in there and like just do some tweaks. And I think it could be really it could really come together in an interesting, cool, smart way. Um, but I, again, maybe I, there's so much about it that I don't know that I would be like missing elements of, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this was a really big task to take on. So I think they did a medium plus job, you know, three knives. That's, I think, not a bad score. Um, but there's, it left me wanting more for sure. And maybe the sequels will deliver on that. But at the very least, they will deliver more Matthew Willard. And that is something to applaud. What more can we ask for? I want more Josh Hutcherson. I want more Matthew Willard. I want more Guinevere Beck. Like I'm here. I'm here. I'm seated. Will here's a question that will be answered in the sequels. Will Josh Hutcherson and Matthew Lillard kiss? They better. Oh, certainly. I'm, I think. Why oh, did they make them I'm, not related if it's not so they can kiss later yes. on? That's really the only reason oh. to make that change. They said we can't have them be father and son because we need these the, two handsome men to kiss on the mouth at the some point. Because sexual chemistry is so raw. Oh. Sweaty, <laughs> worn down men need to smooch. You should have seen the chemistry test for this film. It was <laughs> electric. They're like, whoa, do we recast? Do we change it? Do we put Matthew Lillard as Guinevere Beck? <laughs> Um. Anyway, sorry that Speaking we're like this. <laughs> sorry, not Aiden. sorry. <gasps> yeah. Oh. Oh. No. You don't know. You don't get to introduce it. You don't know. You haven't watched. I'm it just yet. doing a segue. You haven't seen it yet, Chelsea. She hasn't no. seen it yet. I'm yeah. really resistant to it for some reason. Um. <gasps> but maybe I'll see it and it'll change my life. 
Oh, uh, Sydney, what are we doing next week? Sydney, we are, <laughs> we are doing a movie. But when Monica and I were bucketing on New Year's Day, every which, which doesn't mean throwing up because I think it sounds like it means <laughs> that's throwing what it up. sounds like when it Sydney sounds says like throwing it, up. But... Sydney, no, explain not... what it really means for you. Okay, when you bucket, you like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Their it's last Charlie name Bucket. Yeah, is Bucket, <laughs> and the grandparents just sit in bed and do fucking nothing, and so you bucket, and you no, can't. No. When you bucket, you live in bed and you don't leave. Exactly. It. But here's the thing: but you, you don't can't... throw up. No, you don't throw up. But you like you can't bucket by yourself, right? You ha- mm-hmm. like there. bucketing is a group activity. If you are course. by yourself, it's just called rotting. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the difference. <laughs> but so when we were bucketing uh, on New Year's Day, every time something happened in this movie, Monica and I would hold hands. <laughs> what I'm envisioning say, is you sitting. I would say, Sydney, heads hold opposite me. Ends, and then like. Charlie Bucket's grandparents, and then you're you're holding toes together. You're intertwining your toes is what I'm picturing for you Our guys. heads were near each other. It was a sectional couch. And yeah. So, so we Monica like was one way and I was like the in other. The air. And we'd be like this. And that movie, because it's a fucking fifth Tuesday. I almost said fifth Friday. I know. I was like, is she going to do it? <laughs> you did it. You did it. <laughs> And so we get to do whatever the fuck that we want. And whatever the fuck that we want is to see our two baby girls not kiss, even though they did, in Saltburn. I'm ready. I can't tell you what this film has done to me. I have done so much independent research already. And that was before I knew that we would be doing it on the podcast. I cannot wait to watch this movie again. And I'm going to watch it two more times, I think. <laughs> I'm going to watch it so many times. And then I'm going to watch it two more times before we record. Um, Chelsea, research. I don't know anything about you. So <laughs> I don't know what you're going to think. Uh, but I can't I wait to hear Chelsea's will, thoughts on this movie. I feel like this will be a movie that if you don't like it, I will try to fight you're gonna, you. So yeah, I just you're going to get really mad at me. So I, I have to bury you right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll really? see. We'll see. Release your promising young woman vibes from your mind and yeah. go in with an empty slate because mm-hmm. M- the director, Emerald, last name redacted. I don't remember it right now. Fennel. Fennel. Thank Oh, it's a great <laughs> last name. Emerald Fennel. Amazing name. Oh, it's such a sexy name. And she's a <laughs> sexy woman and she made a sexy fucking movie. She's incredible. And she contains multitudes is what I was going to say. I like her as an actress. Oh, I didn't know she was an actress. She was in The Crown. She was in Barbie movie. Mm. She's Mitch well, she's an in incredible movie. fucking director. Camilla Whoosh. in the crown. So yeah, uh trigger warning. It's about to get hot and heavy next week. Steamy weemy. Get ready. Here's the thing. Steamy if Gypsy weemy, Road, what a way to say it. If Gypsy Road Blanchard eat me alive, so that just kind of came out. And I'm sorry, I keep going. <laughs> if Gypsy Rose Blanchard can be horny on Maine, then so can we. That's true. That's the gospel truth. We have a platform to be horny on Maine at all time, and God damn it, I want to use it. Amazing. Okay, well, poll question. Do we want to do the one that I posed as a segmento? Sure. Now yeah. I'm saying it. Ugh, <laughs> I've gone too far. My um, influence. You shouldn't have uh, given her the opening. Well, I've, I've done that like three times now, so anyway. um, Yes, so the, the question is, which of the Freddy Fazbear's animatronics are you? And then the write-in question is, and why? <laughs> and why? <laughs> why do you feel like you relate? And why do you feel that way? Um, and then take this to therapy. <laughs> yeah, look inside your soul. Um, or, you know, just explain the whole Freddy verse to us in the write-in question, too, if you can. Cause... Yeah, if you've got some fun lore for us, please explain. Or write in, you're right, Monica, the balloon boy is <laughs> <laughs> Um, But why not, you know, do the most important thing that you can possibly do with your life, which is spend one minute of your time giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or just a five-star rating on Spotify. That would be so nice. 
And I think my 2024 goal is to get us to 200 reviews. It could happen. We're not that far away, but we're not that close either. So only you can help. <laughs> <laughs> and why not follow us on social media? We're at spooky underscore Tuesday on pretty much everything except for Facebook and Tumblr where we are at spooky Tuesday pod. And we're going crazy on YouTube. Don't forget. We are getting so many subscribers. It's crazy. Some would say there's 10 more than there were the last time I updated you. So that's pretty Woo-hoo! exciting. <laughs> Rapid growth. Um, uh-huh. That's pretty great. So, yeah, we're trying to monetize. Come on. Um, And, yeah, at the end of the day, thank you for listening. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Best spookies. I always come back. Spooky Tuesday was created by Monica Height, Sydney Thompson, and Chelsea Duff, and edited by Sydney Thompson. Our gorgeously spooky tunes are all thanks to Tamara Simons, who you can follow on Instagram at Captain Tamara, and our podcast art is by Mary Murphy, who you can find on Instagram at the underscore moon underscore omg. 